Everyone in the Coaster community is talking about Cedar Point's 2024 edition, and right now, the other Ohio park, Kings Allen, is getting no love. However, Kings Allen has a lot of land and quite a few different coasters that would fit extremely well into their lineup. Let's talk about Kings Allen's next coaster, what model it is, where it would fit, and when this project would take place. Before we get into the five models I have picked out, let's talk about when and where these coasters will be built. Now, I highly doubt Kings Island will get any coaster in 2024. There has been no construction work around the park, no teasing, and with Cedar Point getting a massive 2024 addition, Cedar Fair wouldn't want to take the love away from Cedar Point. At the earliest, Kings Island would receive a coaster in 2025, which I think is very likely. 2026 is also likely, but I feel like Cedar Fair wouldn't put a six-year gap between coasters. Five years between coasters is the longest gap Kings Island has had since 2014. So let's say this coaster will be built in either 2025 or 2026. Where could these rides be built? Of course, the most likely plot of land and the most obvious is the Vortex plot of land. This plot of land is absolutely massive, would fit any coaster well, is visually appealing in the park, and is super terrain heavy, allowing for very unique layouts. Vortex was a terrain heavy coaster with the Batwing element, was the most picturesque in the park, and has been removed since 2019. This plot of land has been empty for years now, and this is one of the parts of the park that needs an upgrade. Whenever Cedar Fair adds a new coaster, an upgrade to the area around it usually occurs as well. Look at Blue Ridge Junction, the Boardwalk, or Area 72. These were all pretty large area upgrades to the parts of the park that needed it most. The area between Coney Mall and Rivertown needs an upgrade, and this would help that. The other area in the park that needs an upgrade is Action Zone, while Banshee did replace some of Son of Beast's lands, there is an absolutely massive chunk of land that has yet to be used behind the Pretzel Knot element. While this isn't as likely for Kings Island, as they would most likely want to replace the ugly fenced off area where Vortex was before using this plot of land, anything is possible. As for the themes of these coasters and areas, I have no idea. They could just be loosely themed coasters, kind of how Val Raven was and have just a visual upgrade to the area around it. Now let's talk about the possible ride models. I have a super likely model and four other models that could possibly be built based on Cedar Fair's relationships with manufacturers. The first model is a ground up RMC. A lot of people are saying that Kings Island should add a ground up RMC theme to the fallen Son of Beast. The theme is not out of reach as Worlds of Fun just pulled this off with Zambezi Zinger and even had a spiral lift and turn from the original ride built. However, I think this is a bit weird. If this were to happen, it would be built over by Banshee, and they could even have a massive helix pay tribute to the original Rose Bowl element. Like I previously said though, Kings Island would be more willing to expand the Vortex plot of land before the Action Zone plot of land. Also, looking at Cedar Fair's relationship with RMC, having structural issues with Steel Vengeance and having to implement different locker and baggage systems on all the RMCs in the chain, they aren't as willing to build from that manufacturer. Also, a ride like this is super similar to Steel Vengeance in the same state, and Storm Chaser just a few hours south. A more likely model would be a B&M dive coaster. We know that Cedar Fair loves working with B&M. They are super reliable and provide coasters that the GP love. Now, something I noticed while working on this video, Kings Island only has three inverting coasters. For a park of this size, that is crazy. Considering that out of the three, Banshee is the only one that is worth waiting for, as Invertigo and Flight of Fear are pretty bad rides, I realize Kings Island needs another inverting coaster. Even smaller parks like Six Flags America have more inverting coasters than Kings Island. While Val Raven is just four hours away, I feel that B&M could pull off a dive coaster that is different enough to pull crowds in. This would be really unique in the terrain setting, having an implement or dive loop where Vortex's Batwing was to pay homage to the fallen Arrow Looper. In addition, Kings Island could have a more airtime or pacing focused layout like Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger and can even have a beyond vertical drop, something that Kings Island is lacking. Moving on to the next coaster, a Gershlauer Infinity Coaster. Cedar Fair hasn't worked with Gershlauer since Hangtime in 2018, but to my knowledge, Hangtime had no issues and was a win for Knott's Berry Farm. A terrain focused Gershlauer Infinity Coaster would be fantastic here. Something that starts the launch with many inversions or just a beyond vertical drop in the terrain setting would be fantastic. Like I said, Kings Island needs an inversion heavy coaster and also another launch coaster. Right now, the best launch in the park is Flight of Fear, which is a mediocre launch on a bad coaster. They could really use another launch. An infinity coaster could have many inversions, a beyond vertical drop, a launch, and could be a hit for Kings Island. 
However, another coaster that is more likely and could add a lot to the lineup is a Mach multi-launch. This would be on the level of Helix. Cedar Fair just worked with Mach in 2019 on Copperhead Strike, and an upscaled version focused on rapid transitions, a sensation King's Island needs more of, would be fantastic. Again, a launch coaster on the scale of Helix or Beyond the Clouds, with unique inversions like a stall or a Batwing that pays homage to Vortex would be fantastic. It could even have a Beyond vertical drop on that top hat. I would like to say Intamin for the manufacturer, but Cedar Fair despises working with Intamin, so Mach is the second best option. The top hat could also have a larger drop than actual height because of the terrain aspect. But now, let's talk about the actual most likely coaster for this park. This coaster was just built, and now that it has rave reviews from enthusiasts and the general public, features inversions, a launch, could have a graceful and terrain heavy layout, and super unique seating, I realized a surf coaster is the best option for Kings Island. Again, Cedar Fair loves B&M, and this coaster would fill everything Kings Island needs. The surf coaster would also be one of a kind in the northern United States. The closest stand-up would be at Carowinds, which is 7 hours away from Kings Island. Think about how nice a surf coaster would be here. It would stand tall on the super picturesque plot of land, and would pay homage to both Vortex and King Cobra. King Cobra was a stand-up in the 80s that Kings Island built from Togo, and because Cedar Fair loves hinting at attractions in the past, like with Zambezi Zinger and the Grim Pavilion, why wouldn't they do it with King Cobra and Vortex? The surf coaster would be a hit for the enthusiasts and general public alike, and would fit every gap the park has. And imagine this, an upscaled pipeline with more rapid turns and inversions. Not more intense because that wouldn't really work with the stand-up trains, but more transitions and unique inversions such as a zero-g roll or tighter corkscrew would be phenomenal and a weird sensation with these new trains and might cause experimentation at any parks who buy the surf coaster. Also, the surf coaster could definitely hug the terrain and all the hills in that plot of land, which would make for a unique experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment what you think King's Island's next coaster should be, and have a great rest of your day.